today on Commander Replay. Lavinia Azorius Renegade is back against Lord Wingrace, Nekusar, and Kalia. Find out who wins the long blue-white control grind next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, I want to take a quick second to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have a new Patreon supporter, Jazz Fox. Jazz Fox, you are awesome. If you guys want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. You guys know, I do have a Twitter page now, so feel free to check me out on Twitter, at Commander Replay. Alright, welcome back everyone, playing some more Lavinia Azorius Renegade. Uh, don't love this opening hand, we're missing blue mana, so we're gonna mulligan that one. Yeah, this is better, we have both colors of mana, Soul Ring, Thran Dynamo, Counter Spells, Avacyn, yeah, good stuff. Go ahead and keep that hand. So it's gonna bring it to our turn one. Oh. We draw into a mana drain. Nice. Uh, let's go ahead and play the island right here. Then get down the soul ring. And we'll pass like that. So that's going to bring it to our turn two. Oh, ancient tomb. Wow. All of the mana ramp. If I could like cash in one of these mana ramp cards for another game where I have zero ramp in the opening hand, that would be wonderful. Um, right here, I think I'm going to go, we're going to go Hallowed Fountain untapped. Then get down the Thran Dynamo. We should be good for another turn before we need to worry about uh, mana draining anything. So get the Dynamo into play. No, we don't have enough white. If we had more white, we could play like Avacyn next turn probably, but unless we draw something else, we'll probably look to get our commander or maybe, maybe we want to get Mystic Confluence going. Just try to draw some extra cards could be a thing too. So as I mentioned, we're playing Lavinia Azorius Renegade. We find ourselves in a game for strong decks. Opponents discussing the snow apocalypse, and there's a demonic tutor for the Kalia opponent. Anyway, so Lavinia's abilities: blue and white for a two-two. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with convert a mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. Uh, as we saw in game one, pretty effective against Ethereum Sculptor and one mana artifacts against a uh, Sharoom opponent. And we did actually get a couple counters into the knowledge pool, and a few other things got countered along the way. So, yeah, Lavinia just nasty, nasty, nasty. And with this particular deck, I mean, I just tried to build it as nasty as possible. You should not play this deck against friends, loved ones, anything like that. Then no one will ever want to play with you again, unless your group is full of really, really strong decks. But even then... Even when people have really strong decks, they still generally like to be able to play magic as opposed to what Lavinia does, which says do not play magic. A bounce land and a brainstorm for the Nekusar opponent. And so as I mentioned, we're playing some strong opponents. Right now I feel good about actually having the tools that we need to be able to deal with a lot of the stuff. Uh, Lord Wingrace might be a little bit tough just since we don't have like tons and tons of combat damage um, in our deck, but I guess probably a counterspell is probably the best way to handle that but yeah just like sitting on this hollowed burial lots of mana ramp into Kalia and Nekusar I feel pretty good about things right now there there's a Scalding Tarn um I think we actually want the Scalding Tarn I'm gonna try to get some white mana for this uh Avacyn seems like a pretty good idea I think we just cast our commander right here not much else to really do yet Kalia should still be two turns away even if it's not we can always play the board wipe plus Lavinia shuts off like if they ran some random thing like Simic Spirit Guide or something like that, or random... No, never mind, doesn't shut off that. They, they could have like a Simeon Spirit Guide or something like that. That uh... Anyway, uh, we'll crack the Scalding Tarn and then just pass with the Colorless Mana open. Let's get our... Let's get the Irrigated Farmland since uh, there's nothing to do with one mana this turn. Anyway, let's take a look at what our opponents are playing. First up, we have a Lord Wingrace opponent, and they just cracked a fetch, so trying to get some lands into their graveyard. Gonna play an Azusa. Ooh, Azusa, good against Lavinia since they can just drop all the lands and play all the stuff. Next turn I think we're going to want to hold up counter magic for Lord Wingrace. Although on the other hand, well we don't have the white mana yet, but if we did for some reason, uh, slamming Avacyn just seems really exciting. So it looks like land and pass for the Kalia opponent. Opponent's going to play a Stormscape Familiar, the Nekusar is. Uh, it's interesting, got to be careful with those cost reduction spells. <laughs> Lavinia will get you. That's going to bring it back to our turn. We draw into a tithe. Uh, actually, tithe isn't too bad right here. Uh, opponent has five lands. Yeah, so I guess we just go ahead and play the tithe. We don't need the ancient tomb just yet, so I'm going to wait until we actually need that, So just so we can avoid the life loss. Uh, we can get ourselves two planes out of our deck. How many basics do we have? We have one basic currently. Let's get the misfail planes, and I guess we get the tundra. Uh, three blue mana doesn't really help us out right here, so we'll just go for the misfail planes. Bring that in tapped. And pass like that. Uh, could have attacked with Lavinia, but it's probably not entirely necessary. <laughs> uh, end step Vampiric Tutor for the Lord Wingrace. Interesting. 
Let's see what they try to do on their next turn. Uh, we're sitting on Mana Drain and Mystic Confluence, both great places to be. All right, let's see what they're going for. Crucible of Worlds. Hmm. Uh, that's going to be... I think we're going to go Mystic Confluence on that because I want to draw the cards. Opponent doesn't have three, correct? Doesn't look like it. So let's counter that Crucible of Worlds. Oh, we draw Land and Blatant Thievery. Blatant Thievery is nasty. Uh, so we could potentially steal Azusa, Kalia, maybe Nekisar? <laughs> steal everyone's commanders? That would be funny. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, like I said, like I talked about a little bit in game one, uh, this is just a compilation of the nastiest blue and white cards I could find. <laughs> just absolutely gross. Uh, we could use the Kalia to drop down the Avacyn for free. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm getting excited. Oh, the misery of this deck. <laughs> come on, please play Nekusar. Make our dreams come true right here. And I think if we steal the Azusa, we can also leave up the Mana Drain. Oh man, this is about to be super ridiculous. Now, a couple things, a couple things I'm going to point out now. We have a significant advantage in this game for two reasons. One, we're playing first, which is a pretty big advantage. And two, we had turn one Soul Ring and just like all the mana ramp in the world. Amulet of Safekeeping. Whenever you become the target of spell or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell unless it pays one. Meh, <laughs> fine with that. If we didn't mana ramp like crazy, that could actually be a thing, but... So that's gonna bring it back to our turns. We draw a plane. Let's drop down this Tundra. Play the Blatant Thievery. Let's go Azusa, Kalia... Uh, Nekisar, uh, Nekisar not in play yet. Stormscape Familiar help us. A white and... Ah, steal the land. Yeah. Yep. Let's just do that. So, things about to get really nasty. Blatant Thievery, such a beating. This has been a nasty card for a long, long time. Uh, so there we go. We got a Kalia, and we've got an Azusa. Let's drop down this island, drop down this plains, get to the beat sticks with the uh, Lavinia, go after the uh, Lord Wingrace one time. Oh, continuing on our opponents, by the way. Completely forgot to do that. Uh, our second opponent, Fenrir Unbound 13, a Patreon supporter of mine, is piloting the Kalia deck, which I have now stolen. Kalia is a very glassy aggro deck. If you can sneak it through all the removal, it is really good. If someone blows up Kalia when it comes down on turn 3 or turn 4, uh, it's not so great because you have a deck full of 6 and 7 drop creatures and not necessarily the ramp to play them efficiently. So, like I said, it's very glassy. If you get that first attack off and no removal happens, life is great. If you don't, life is terrible. However, still a very fun commander. Like, if you just want to slam big creatures, Kalia is the way to do it. But, like I said, it's one of those you-must-kill-immediately kind of commanders. There's starting to be more and more of those in the game. Last game we saw Neheb. Neheb is definitely in that category. Najila is another one. But, there's, yeah, there's a, there's a growing number of commanders that you just you need to kill them as soon as they hit play. Otherwise, they're going to cause major problems. And Kalia probably one of the original ones, at least in terms of the, like, commander product era of... Once they started releasing the commander products, that each commander product has at least one or two like really push commanders, and uh, Kalia, no exception. There's a Nissa Vital Force coming down. Meh. Opponent's gonna get back a land. So that's gonna be a tap out and pass from the Kalia opponent. Nice. Um, one of the things when you build a Kalia deck is determining how much removal you should run in that deck. I don't specifically have the answer, but this would be a situation where you want to be running a little bit more removal. But it is tempting to just jam, like, you know, 37 drops into the deck. So we draw a Polluted Delta. Let's drop down our lands right here. Go to combat. Uh, Lavinia into the Nyssa. Kalia into the Lord Wingrace. Lord Wingrace actually has a lot of lands, so, you know, they could potentially do some stuff. Could be kind of scary. And uh, we'll send Azusa into the Kalia opponent. So Kalia gets a trigger. Let's slam down that Avacyn. Boom! Avacyn in. So Avacyn was the card that I slotted in place of the Approach the Second Sun, which in this exact moment is uh, feeling like a pretty good call. Don't know if that'll pan out over a large number of games, but uh, Avacyn, always a really sweet creature, attacks, blocks, protects all your stuff, is basically just a brick wall and also is a threat. So kind of just does all the things you want a creature to do. So for a deck that's trying to lock the game out, uh, that seems like a great creature to have. Uh, Nekusar scoops the game, yup. <laughs> There's the misery scoop, Nissa going down. Lord Wingrace down to 24, and Kalia opponent to 39. 
And so whenever possible, I don't play lots of blue and white, but whenever I am and whenever possible, if I'm trying to establish a lock in the game, it is also my goal to, once I establish that lock, have a way to kill people relatively quickly. If we played Knowledge Pool next turn, having Avacyn already in play, opponents will probably just scoop the game and not have to bang our head against the wall for an hour or two while I try to find a win condition. I try not to make it the most miserable where there's like, it's control with like no win conditions. Uh, my buddy Dave was playing a Child of Alara deck that like, I don't know if there was actually like a real win condition in the deck. It would basically just blow everything up every turn and like didn't further itself in a lot of ways. So my thing is, if you're going to play a deck like that, yeah, blow the board up, do it once, do it twice if you have to, then get something into play that says, that firmly establishes I'm going to win the game in a couple turns. Uh, there probably isn't a lot you can do about it. That way people don't have to feel bad about scooping the game. Yep, there's a Vampire Tutor. So opponent plays Eternal Witness, gets back the Vampire Tutor, casts the Vampire Tutor. Uh, and depending on what they're trying to do, we will probably Mana Drain whatever card is coming our way. Could be a Toxic Deluge, try to wipe the board on three mana, but... I don't know, maybe if maybe they have something else in mind, we'll see. Hollowed Burial in here, by the way, since, since this is the type of commander that's going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of uh, strong decks... Graveyard strategies do show up when you start talking about strong decks. So playing Hollowed Burial gets rid of things that are indestructible. So if there's big Eldrazi flying around, also hurts graveyard decks since it puts the creature back into their deck. It's not available from the graveyard again. Ooh, a Skitterix. Huh? How much do we care about Skitterix? Infect is pretty bad. Infect will take down Avacyn over the course of two turns. Um, hmm. We know opponent just Vampiric tutored. Oh man, against all better judgment, I'm going to let the Skitterix go just because of that Vampiric Tutor that went off. I assume that something nasty is coming out of the Vampiric Tutor. Nothing else we may chump block with uh, Kalia on that Skitterix one time. If it becomes a real problem, then we can start blocking with things and go go Hollowed Burial. Right of Replication is probably actually another good win condition to add to this deck. Whoever gets a creature into play just copied a bunch of times and life is good. Uh, at our opponent's end step, we're going to put this Blatant Thievery back on the bottom of our deck. Uh, mostly for no other reason than we just don't have a lot going on with our mana currently, so might as well do something. Uh, we're also going to crack this fetch after, uh, which will shuffle our library, so Blatant Thievery, very slim chance, 1 out of 82, but uh, may come back to the top of our deck, you never know. So we'll grab this Prairie Stream, that'll come in, and we'll bring it back to our turn. There's an Authority of the Consoles, that one's interesting. Go ahead and play the Authority of the Consoles. Gonna leave Kalia back on defense for the Skitterix and send the other stuff. Uh, actually, no, I guess we're just sending the Avacyn into the Lord Wing Grace. Definitely getting to a point, though, where we need to look at some card draw, and it may be true that this deck needs one or two more pieces of card draw in it. There's a Fact of Fiction, Rhystic Study, I think there's a Nezzle Hall still in the deck. Nezzle Hall would be pretty sweet. Yep, there's the Toxic Deluge, so we're going to give that the old Mana Drain. Opponent actually could have played that last turn. Uh, they did have a Command Tower open, and I believe three mana. Ooh, that puts them down to six. <laughs> they're, now they're in a real bad spot. Been a lot of life for that thing. So, glad we held up the counterspell for that, the Mana Drain. Still gonna have to deal with the Skitterix at some point, not out of not out of the woods just yet. Thran Dynamo coming down for our opponent, sure. And that will actually help them quite a bit, because their hand is probably full of, like, 7 and 8 drops right now. So, next turn, they may actually be able to cast some of that stuff. Commander Sphere coming down. Gonna draw with the Commander Sphere. One's gonna tap out and pass. Uh, they should have actually left that open, because... Well, I guess Skitterix is 2 to regenerate. Let's see if they want to swing with it. So that's going to bring it back to our turn. Mana Drain Trigger on us. We'll get two colorless mana. Three colorless mana, excuse me. And uh, we draw into a negate. Nothing to really do. Oh, crap. We could have recycled the Mystic Confluence back. Well, let's do that right now before we forget again, since we don't have that much else going on. Uh, so recycle the Mystic Confluence. Send the Avacyn into the Lord Wingrace. This should do it. If they try to play removal or anything, we do have the negate. I do want to get them out of the game. And then we'll start worrying about the Kalia opponent. Lord Wingrace, negative two. They go down. And uh, we'll pass a turn like that. Uh, all we really have right now is the Hollow Burial and the negate. Basically just got to sit on those for a while. I really don't want to Hollow Burial Avacyn back into our library. But if Kalia plays a bunch of nasty things right here, we may need to. At the moment, though, the Regenerate on Skitterix is uh, Vessel of Endless Rest. Put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Okay. Gonna put the tutor back on the bottom. Sure. There's a Harvester of Souls coming into play. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Comes in tapped. We will gain a life. So up to 37 we go. Let's see if opponent wants to attack. Uh, actually, wouldn't make sense to right here. Uh, I would block. 
If opponent attacks with Skitterix, they don't ever generate up, I would block with the Avacyn to try and kill it. Which means I'm also going to go on the attack. There's the land tax. Not super helpful. Play the land tax. We ramped like crazy after stealing that Azusa. So, yeah, we're going to swing with the Avacyn one time right here. If they want to... Skitterix is pretty scary to me, so if they want to trade that in, I'm completely okay with that. If they do that, it will... It will reduce the effectiveness of Avacyn quite a bit. At this moment in time, I am willing to make that trade. But also, if opponent doesn't want to make that trade, I'm cool with that too. Let's start getting the damage in. Looks like, the, looks like they're going to think about it for a second. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough choice right there. Looks like they're taken. Down to 31 they go. Let's see what opponent's got. Oh, Gisela. That's a card. That may be the hollowed burial. We will see. Gisela comes in tapped. Authority of the consoles will trigger. Opponent going to swing with the Skitterix and the Harvester of Souls. Uh, let's see. Opponent can regenerate this. Regenerate the Skitterix. We would go to 8 Infect, take 10 damage off of the Harvester. Actually, uh, we can block the Harvester all day. Do we take 8 Infect? If opponent has removal of any kind on Avacyn, uh, then it becomes a real issue. Although, uh, we have Negate. So, I'm going to take the Skitterix, right? Can they pump it? No, they can't pump it. Okay. So, uh, we're just going to block everything on the Harvester of Souls. Make sure that it dies. So, 8 Infect. 8 Infect. Gotta be careful. Could use a big draw, too. A big draw would be... Super sweet. Render Silent is a card. So opponent likely attacks with both next turn. We would take 10 from Gisela, and we'll have to block the Skitterix, which means Kalia is going to stay back. Until we can draw more cards, we're going to try to ride this for a little bit. Uh, we will have two flying blockers in Kalia and Avacyn. Uh, with Authority of the Console still down, op opponent won't be able to, like, surprise sneak a bunch of things into play with haste, so that's good. Yeah, we're gonna have to grind. We're gonna have to grind a little bit in this game. Opponent, like I said, opponents probably just got a handful of massive creatures since they haven't played much this game, and they're probably just gonna keep slamming these things once they run out. And if I feel like we're in a bad spot, then we'll go for the hollowed burial. But there aren't tons of win conditions in the deck, or at least you know there's a handful, but we're not drawing into them at the moment. So I think we just gotta ride this Avacyn. Opponent takes half damage, goes down to 26. Rough. Gisela, so so good. Such a good magic card. That Render Silent would have been nice last turn for the Gisela, because I absolutely would have countered that. Demon of Wailing Agonies. Let's take a look at this one. Flying Lieutenant, as long as your commander, as long as you have your commander, gets plus two, plus two whenever it deals damage to a player, that player sacrifices a creature. Uh, not worth a counter, I don't think. Again, probably going to have the Hollowed Burial at some point, so that's another one to get swept into the Hollowed Burial. Here they come. Actually, we could double block on... Uh, nope, we do have to... We do need to block the Skitterix. Uh, otherwise, that'll be a problem. So, Kalia on the Skitterix... Avacyn on the Gisela. So Kalia back to the command zone, and Avacyn eats up all of the Gisela damage. We stay at 39. Ooh, opponent's going to use the command beacon to get Kalia back to play. Do we counter the Kalia? No, we, we probably just need to hollowed burial. I think Avacyn's taking us as far as she can, trying to hold off this uh, army of big flyers. So we are probably on the hollowed burial plan. So it's probably going to be something like play hollowed burial, render silent, uh, the first thing they cast. Big draw! Mystical Tutor is a pretty big draw. We're gonna wait. We're gonna hold on to that until the end step. Not entirely sure what we're going for, to be completely honest. Well, actually, uh, Blatant Thievery is in the deck. Treachery? No, we can't get Treachery. Um, so let's swing. When it goes down to 21, that damage getting halved by the Gisela. So so good. Uh, play the Hollowed Burial. Lavinia goes back to the command zone. Avacyn back into our deck. All those nasty creatures back into our opponent's Kalia deck. Kalia should be good and expensive to recast. Uh, main phase two, let us get our commander back. And then we'll sit on our instant speed stuff. Ooh, Scourge of Courages. Uh, Scourge of Courages has the ability to control a board really, really well. So I'm thinking no. That is a pet card of mine. I really like that card. Uh, so if you can untap with it, it's ridiculous. Opponent's in a situation where I think they can untap with it, so it's got to get countered. We're going to end step this Mystical Tutor. Uh, what do we got? We got Time Twister as a card. Time Spiral is a card. A bunch of removal. Factor Fiction is a little bit of card draw. Expropriate? Actually not that good with uh, only one opponent. I mean, it's fine, but not nearly the thing you think of. Uh, Blatant Thievery, a little less good with one opponent. I th yeah, I think it's just going to be like a time spiral. Do we want... So time spiral gives us seven new cards, and we get to untap seven lands. Or we get to untap six lands, excuse me. And what's the other one do? It's that new blue-white one. Where'd that thing go? Emergency powers. That is seven mana. Oh, and that one gives you a free spell. Okay, I like time spiral a little bit better right here. So let's get the old time spiral. We draw the time spiral. 
Go to combat. Swing with the Lavinia. Pwn it down to 19 for commander damage. Tap the soul ring. Uh, in all likelihood... Oh, 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 oh. Crap, I forgot to do the land thing the right way. Whoops. Oh, there's an omen machine. Well, that should lock... Omen machine should lock the game out right here. Plus, we just got some creature removal. Very good against this deck. Oh, man. Wish I played our lands the right way there. Mess that one up. Uh, so let's play... Actually, I don't know what we're playing yet. So let's get the omen machine in. Tap the ancient tomb. We got triple blue for Teferi. Uh, we should leave up one white for the path to exile. Okay. So we're going to tap mostly white mana for this one if we can. Omen machine down. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five mana open. Uh, let us play the planes and get to fairy. Pass turn like that. Sit on the uh, instant speed removal. Omen machine will trigger for our opponent. Got a fan of the channel in the room watching the game. Uh, Omen machine. I didn't see what Omen machine hit uh, right there. So Kalia back to play and Angelic Field Marshal into play. Tapped. Omen machine for us. Uh, there's a scourge of. Oh, that must have been the thing that. That must have been the thing that got hit for Akalia. Unless Scourge of Courage has got shuffled into our library? That'd be weird. What did we reveal? I don't understand what happened. Meaning of each player's draw step, that player exiles the top card of their library. If it's land, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, that player casts it without paying their mana cost, if able. No idea what happened. Check the game log. Oh, we got an Arcane Lighthouse. Okay. So we exile opponent's Scourge of Courage's. Cool. Down for that. On their turn. Uh, it's now caught in the temporary zone land, where it'll probably be stuck until the rest of the game. Um, play this. Let's play the island let us get some card draw going with this factor fiction got some nasties right there glenalendra rest in peace gonna put glenalendra at rest oh yeah that's an easy choice right there we have all the lands so choose and pile two play the glenalendra sit on the rest in peace yet we don't need it just yet we've been able to do some stuff with misfail planes uh graveyards are mostly empty after the wheel effect so no burning need for uh rest in peace yet uh then i think we go to combat with these two Pwn it down to 14, 6 commander, and pass like that. Omen machine will trigger. Again, I do not see what get uh, what the omen machine hit for our opponent. The game log just a little bit weird for omen machine. Micaeus the Unhallowed. Well, that's that's going to be a path to exile moment. Authority of the consoles will trigger. Sure. So Kalia going on the attack, and Angelic Field Marshal going on the attack. Ooh, gives their creatures vigilance. Seems pretty good. Archfiend of Despair. Flying. Opponents can't gain life. At the beginning of each end step, that opponent loses life equal to the... Ooh, that's pretty nasty. Uh, we're actually running short on removal. We're going to need <laughs> we're gonna need some big hits. Opponent might be able to get there. Um, okay. So, authority of the console triggers. We gain one life. We're going to be losing double life, essentially. Gross. Yeah, that'll be bad. Okay, so use Glenalendra to block the Kalia. That will kill the Kalia and just be generally annoying for our opponent. Really want to shoot the Machaeus with the path of uh with the path to exile, but this Archfiend of Despair will kill us really quickly. Ooh, nice. We uh we exiled the Linvala for our opponent. I think we gotta exile the Archfiend of Despair. As much as like Machaeus is really, really bad, I think the Archfiend is actually worse. Cause the Archfiend takes away time. Right now the one thing we kinda have going is time. Or at least had going. Especially with Omen Machine, we'll get to look at some extra cards. Generally be annoying for our opponents. Ah, oh, crap, I missed the Miss Veil Plains trigger again. Omen Machine is going to trigger. Come on, something big. What did we get? I didn't see. Lavinia tried to move from Limbo. Well, that's weird. Is Omen Machine broken? Very odd. I'm actually not feeling Omen Machine. Like, it doesn't completely shut our opponents down in the way that uh, the other one does. Play the Strip Mine. Uh, now things are kind of tough. Use Miss Veil Plains. Get the, put the Factor Fiction. Yeah, Omen Machine we can't draw which is, like, kind of an issue, even if we catch a draw spell. So, like, we really need to just catch a win condition. Yeah, we uh, we can't swing in. 4-4, four, four, undying. Bigger than what we got going. Just gonna have to stay put. Hope to catch something off the top. Omen Machine will trigger. Opponent gets a Cabal Coffers. Really? You're running that in a Kalia deck? That is ambitious. Even on turn 14, they have one Swamp, two Swamp. I know there's the Urbor combo, but that just doesn't seem worth it. If you're playing a multicolor deck like that, uh, generally Cabal Coffers isn't the best idea unless you have some specific like land thing going on, which means you're probably also in green. But yeah, for Kalia, I would not be running Cabal Coffers. Opponent hits a Blood Crypt, so getting, what, a third swamp can break even on the Cabal Coffers now. But yeah, if uh, if we don't catch something big in the next turn or two, we're going to lose the game. Kalia coming back to play, comes in tapped, we will gain a life. Uh, that means that they probably don't have anything really good in their hand, so that's good. They are coming in for 11, though. Gross. 
double block on Micaeus? Maybe. Has Intimidate. Oh, Intimidate. I think we're taken then. We are taken. Need a big draw for Omen Machine hit. We hit a land. Things are looking bad now. Uh, we do have the Helm of Obedience combo for this Rest in Peace, so Helm of Obedience is the one that I'm kind of looking for right now. Opponent's last card was a land. Don't think they hit a land with the Omen Machine. Opponent coming in with everything. Yep. Uh, gonna go no. If we block the Angelic Field Marshal, then we take seven, but then we have no blockers next turn. I think we do it. Yeah, let's block the Angelic Field Marshal. Down to 18. Back to our turn. Omen Machine's gonna trigger. Uh, Avacyn. Oh, our Avacyn goes. Was that our Avacyn or opponent's Avacyn? No, our Absorb. Oh, we had our Absorb. Oh, with things looking bad now. Whose Avacyn is that? I don't know. Could be opponent's. Opponent's turn. Omen Machine. They hit a land. Uh, it's a Scry Temple. Well, actually, uh, I think now that opponent's hand is empty, Omen Machine means, yeah, they can only get lands. Okay. That's something. <laughs> Board wipe off the top? Would not mind seeing that hollowed burial again. Here comes everything. Uh, again, this will be a hit for 13. It's all got flying except the one we can't block. Gross. Just gotta take. Hope for something big. Back to our turn. This is, our, this is gonna be our last one if we don't catch something. Thaumatic Compass. Uh, huh. Well, I guess we're playing the Thaumatic Compass. Gonna need to figure some things out right here. Oh, we can cast the Absorb now. Well, that's not super helpful. How do I not cast it? I want to not cast it. I think we're forced to cast the Absorb? Can't target itself. Not that, I mean, uh, we're probably just dead then. Well, actually, I mean, the Thaumatic Compass wasn't going to save us anyway. Still got five. Guess we're countering the Thaumatic Compass. Gaining three life, though. Up to eight. Turn 17. Home machine on our opponent. In comes opponent. Uh, doesn't look like we can stop any of that. Uh, we hit an Obnixilus with the Omen Machine. Yeah, we can't block anything. Gross. So down we go. Oh, man. Our next card was Mystical Tutor. Oh, Supreme Verdict right after it. Oh, man. Yeah, that's frustrating. Although with uh, McKay's down, Supreme Verdict doesn't do what we need to do. But yeah, the Omen Machine interaction is like fine. It, that one didn't blow me away. It's not nearly as good as Knowledge Pool. Knowledge Pool just ends the game. Uh, an Omen Machine does get weird with the card draw stuff. So if we're trying to wheel, Omen Machine isn't really where you want to be either. So yeah, we got another look at the we got another look at the Lavinia deck. We had a crazy, crazy start uh, with this deck. We were going first. We had turn one Soul Ring into a turn what two Thran Dynamo, and just all the mana ramp. We got on a pretty early Avacyn down. Right now, there's 13 creatures in the deck. Maybe it needs more. Uh, probably need. I'm not exactly sure what the deck needs. So it does have a lot of control. It probably just needs more card draw, honestly. So, like, we had Nezzle Hall. Nezzle Hall would have been, well, with the Omen Machine down, Nezzle Hall wouldn't do much. But before that point, would have been pretty sweet. Consecrated Sphinx, pretty sweet. Teferi didn't actually do that much. It's sort of a replacement for Lavinia, just in case Lavinia gets blown up a bunch of times. I just don't know if we actually really need that that much, though. But uh, it does shut down instant speed stuff from our opponents, so still pretty good in that regard. Um, yeah, uh, opponent just wore us down, and we couldn't really find... We couldn't draw into a big finisher against a deck that just is chock full of really big creatures, and... You know, we ran out of ways to interact with our creatures, and they got to us. So, uh, well played by our opponent to uh, hang tough through that. This deck probably needs, needs to be tinkered with just a teeny bit um, to get the right balance of stuff in here. Probably get another win condition or two. Uh, something even as simple as, like, a Sunscorch Regent, if we had that out for a couple turns, would be really sweet. Once that gets big enough to block everything that's incoming, then opponent is uh, kind of stuck. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.